and welcome to The Boston Show. I'm your host, Francesco Tartaglia. Last week in Boston, on Saturday, Mayor Walsh joined Green Thumb residents from across the city at the 41st Annual Gardener's Gathering. Held at Northeastern University, the event celebrated local gardening and the beautification of public space. The future of the trustees, the future for you, the future for green space, accessible green space in Boston is just starting. The gathering was sponsored by the Trustees of Reservations, the largest owner and caretaker of community gardens in the state. Awards were also given out for Garden of the Year, Gardener of the Year, and the Rookie Gardener of the Year. Mayor Walsh continued his support for Women's Equity Monday as he ratified the Boston Women's Workforce Council's 100% Talent Compact. The compact is a public-private partnership to close the gender wage gap, which Walsh says is a priority for the city. This is what Marty Walsh, the mayor of Boston, does. This is what we all do and the right thing to do. Because if we truly want to make change, if we truly want to bring pay equity, if we truly want to make our city more, have more equality, we need to work together. One person can't do it alone. The effort is the first of its kind in the nation working directly with employers to collect wage data in real time and implement necessary interventions. Over 100 Boston area companies have already committed to signing the agreement. Later in the day, Chief of Arts and Culture Julie Barros met local artists at Bunker Hill Community College for the city's third Boston Creates Town Hall meeting. Boston Creates is Boston's cultural planning process designed to create a long-term plan to prioritize, coordinate, and align public and private resources to strengthen cultural vitality. Community members were invited to attend and learn more about Boston's overarching cultural planning goals. With the Boston Creates Plan, we really want to see how can we harness the power of creative thought to solve our problems both great and small. Over the past four months, the Boston Creates team has reviewed and analyzed data collected throughout the city. Monday, they gave residents an opportunity to voice their concerns. Uh, I'd be very interested in how we can work to incorporate the ability of the arts and culture to contribute to the overall population health in the cultural plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as you know, um, people who work at the intersection of arts and healing have been meeting and talking about how can they work together more fully. The city's cultural plan is expected to be complete in June. Tuesday, at the Institute of Contemporary Art, Mayor Walsh offered remarks at a celebration honoring Pier 4. Since the 1960s, the site has been the home of Anthony's Pier 4 restaurant, which at its height was the highest grossing restaurant in the entire country. Now it's set for reconstruction. Seeing it go is sad, but also seeing the grand vision for what, what's being developed here is exciting. Commercial real estate company Tishman Spire has purchased lots two and three of the Pier 4 development. Lot two will be developed as a 13-story office building, and lot three will have a nine-story condo. The project will also include a one-acre public park at the tip of the pier, and continue the area's harbor walk. Wednesday morning, Mayor Wall stopped by the Mason Pilot School to thank local mentoring group, the Men of Mason. The group, which is comprised of students' fathers and other men of the community, meet in the school's cafeteria to discuss goals, life problems, and how to become responsible young men. You're the one, the ones who are teaching our future generation. How to be good citizens. How to be good employees. And you're the role model for what success looks like. The Men of Mason Mentoring encourages men in the community to become involved in their children's education by having a reading day with students. 
This program has been going on for eight years. Later that Wednesday, Mayor Walsh offered welcoming remarks at the Imagine Boston 2030 citywide conversation at Boston College. He unveiled a draft of the strategic vision of Imagine Boston 2030 in a forum that featured stakeholders and city staff involved with the planning. How do we improve transportation? How do we improve education? How do we make sure our housing plan of, of 53,000 units of new housing grows? How do we make sure we properly address the climate and climate control and make sure that the future generations? We're looking, working in those different areas, but what Imagine Boston 2030 does is pulls it all together because every single one of the parts work off each other. After his remarks, a panel moderated by Magna Chakrabarti co-host of WBUR's Radio Boston, interacted directly with audience members who shared input about the goals and strategies of Imagine Boston 2030. Avery writes, 58% of Boston housing was constructed pre-1939, and Avery cites the source of the BRA. So uh, how can we mar modernize at a large scale? So we absolutely need to build new housing, and the mayor's goal of 53,000 housing units uh, is, is, I think, the right goal. Maybe it needs to be higher. The event was also live-streamed via satellite to locations throughout the city. Mayor Walsh cut the ribbon at Jupiter Beauty Academy in Dorchester Friday. The school aims to give local residents the skills necessary to work in the cosmetology industry. Walsh was joined by Senator Linda Dorsina Fori who stressed the importance of small business in the city. Over 40,000 small businesses here in Boston, but there is a large number of small businesses that are started by the immigrant community, and the contribution is immeasurable. There are approximately 1,700 nail and beauty salons in the state, the majority of which are run by Vietnamese women. The Academy opening is being praised as an important step forward for the Vietnamese community in the city. Later that day, Mayor Walsh stopped by Kit Clark Senior Services in Dorchester to speak with local seniors. The seniors in particular are, are a very big part of our city, and it's important for us as a city that we continue to get back to you uh, because the seniors of, from, from wherever you come from are the backbone of our city and the backbone of our nation, the backbone of our country, so I want to thank you for being here. The mayor also posed for a group photo with all the senior caregivers, who he specifically thanked for their service. To watch any event covered in its entirety, stay tuned to Boston City TV. Thanks for joining us on this edition of The Boston Show.